Okay. Looks like they, uh, that was relatively easy. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Let's get it. I was just finishing chewing up a sour worm. <laughs> How was it? Was it good? Yeah, it was pretty good. Nice and sour? Yeah, and then kind of sweet. Oh, those are good. So All right, so... Yeah, go now, for it. On the right side of the map, we have Japan, played by the British Musketeer in the color blue. And on the left side of the map, we have France, played by Bababu, a.k.a. Total Chaos. So now we're going to see a Japan against the uh, uh, France. This is one we have not seen before, at least uh, this round. Yeah, I... Uh going to be an interesting way to see how this plays out. Like we said uh, in the last series, a no TP map. So I think France normally likes to build a TP. They're not going to have that option here. Yeah, I think Bob is just a France player, so he's just playing what he's comfortable with here. Yeah, I agree. And France still does um, pretty well against Japan, I think. I think a lot of people even think that France uh, beats Japan pretty hard. So. Um. <laughs> Uh, we didn't look at the map here. Uh, looks like three gold mines for each straight away, and then the bottom oh, side it looks even. Yeah, I think this looks pretty. I think this looks very even. It looks like even. Yeah. Oh, there's a yak about to be stolen here by Japan. Oh, you got it. A water buffalo. Click those yaks back, guys. It's, uh, it's important. He's still just chilling, though. Is it possible that that yak just can't be moved? That was mm. the same yak that we saw also not move the first game. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Maybe he just... He's very comfortable here. He's just chilling. You he's know. also got another one chilling here. Yeah, I mean... Can well, you that one's him? moving. It's so nice in this, in this shallow water, you know? Ah, there they go. Well, there they go, yeah. yeah. They had enough to drink. <laughs> So. And uh, and Japan can actually use them for his big shrine, which is quite a nice boost for him. Yeah. So we have some nice treasures here, right? We have uh, 80 coin right there, and then we have wood treasures here, here, and... Uh, well, where'd that last one go? Nope, never mind. But we have two wood treasures, and Japan's going to find this 80, or this 90 wood right away. Yeah. And there's also a treasure that shows all the gold gold spots. Yeah. But th this treasure is actually really good in like a 2v2 or 3v3. And 1v1, not so much, but it still helps. Right. And that 90 wood is huge for Japan because once Heavenly Kami comes in, their shrines are now... Oh, I get, okay, I get Japan's shrine costs mixed up with uh, British Virginia Company costs. Oh. Is it 78 for shrines? Yeah, it's around that number. I'm not exactly yeah. sure, but it's lower than 80 for sure. Yeah, I play just I play so much Brits, man. I get my stuff confused, but standard uh, shipments coming in here. Three bill for France. Heavenly Kami here for Japan. And France does have hunting dogs already, so that's nice. He's already aging up as well. Yes, France started uh, early market, which is really nice. Especially on there's no TP map, you kind of have to early market. But with 100 less food, that can sometimes be more difficult to do. Exactly, but it looks like he's pulled it off in time, and he's going to have a decent age up here. Yep. Trying to harass the the monks with his native scout here but runs away when he sees there are two of them. So what do you expect to see from the French player here because he's the one that's got the ball going for him or he has to make the move? Um, that's a good question. Honestly I think I would maybe like to see just like heavy colonial play something like uh, 
crossbow pike and then add some hussars, start pike and siege some shrines. Um, but he's chopping a lot of coin here. He's chopping more than the 125 for steel traps. So I think instead we're going to see just maybe a hussar semi and trying to pick off these these monks. I'm not quite sure. Mm. I don't know. It's it's hard. I would be hesitant to semi FF. Yeah, hussar semi is it's not the. Yeah, the, I agree. Best option against Japan, I would say. Maybe we'll, we'll just see some muscats. Yeah, but maybe. No, the Samwise build. There's no uh, forward forward base though. He could even oh he could even just be going for straight naked FF. FF yeah. Yeah, I like this actually. Yeah. Maybe. Now it starts to make sense. Into, but he's dropping a stable, but that's okay. Because Japan is kind of susceptible to these early fortress timings, and look at this, Japan. Since they're shrining so much, they aren't really scouting, and they're building an entire wall here. That's an expensive wall. Maybe not quite so much in wood, but in villager seconds as well. And he really didn't need it. He's already at 60 shrine pops, so he's moving right along with his shrining. That's true. Another shrine going down in the middle of the map. That's I like, nice. I like the mid map shrine. Oh, oh why uh, is he leaving? Man, I do this a lot too. It's because I because I shift click wrong and I don't hold it down long enough. And it looks like British Musketeer is a bad case of reasons why I'm a captain as well. So I share his pain there. Yeah, that is quite unfortunate, especially in a tournament match. Yeah, you know it's hard playing in tournaments. Um, yeah, I think the nerves get to some people and yeah. they make some silly mistakes. It's quite common to see. I mean, I played one game on Saturday SmackDown once, and I was <laughs> my hand was like literally <laughs> shaking. I was so nervous, <laughs> and the only reason I played is because the other player lagged out. <laughs> I was just like a last case desperate uh -huh. situation. But um, here we see five hussars coming out of France. So I'm not quite sure what these are going to accomplish. Maybe just help them gather some gather some. Yeah, he's picking up this 100 food treasure, yeah. which is very nice pickup here and some decent micro as well. Looks like Bob's unit control is right on spot here. Yep. I'd like him Oh, if he can scout this explorer. If he can pick up these explorer, uh, it'll be nice cuz Japan's only on about 100 shrine count here. But oh, he doesn't quite see it. Instead, he's just going to push into here and try to garrison some bills. Oh, it looks like he's found right the spot to go in in, in this wall here. Yeah. Oh, five Ashy popping out, though. That's uh, that's a nice timing here from British Musketeer. Yeah, I don't think he's going to pick up any villagers. And he's losing one Hussar, almost two, maybe. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I'd maybe like to see some villagers in there, pick off that last one in the TC. But yeah. You know, all in all, I kind of like Japan's position here. So Bob is aging up to the third age, so it was a Hussar semi here. Yeah. But I wonder if just a... Wow, did you see that? <laughs> yeah. <divine> strike? <laughs> I saw the end of it. That's insane. Oh. Poof. I see, I wonder if the... If the FF minus the Hussar is going to be a little more effective, because it just hit quite a bit sooner. Um... But nonetheless, he is going to hit up, and you see, not having a trading post is kind of affecting him because he doesn't have a shipment yet. And this shrine is still 90% uh, of the way done. Yeah. That's an empty shrine. He's already at 130 shrine pop, about to be at 140. Would have been at 150 with this shrine done. Yeah. He needs a, he's got a lot of wood here. He should just kind of bust him out here. Um, maybe I'd like to see some more down in this lower map area. But he's got, a, he's got them all spread out well, so he's doing good. Yeah, that's the thing about doing a semi with friends here. You don't really pick off any shrines, and you just let Japan do what they want, really. Right. If, you know, if anything, maybe I'd like to see a, a five pike semi or, or so. Because at least then I think you can pick off a couple shrines. Yeah, exactly. But, and then if you keep your, your pikes alive, they're still valuable in H3. The seed shrines while you're uh, using your army more proactively. And he invested a lot of wood in this wall, as you said, and he didn't finish it all the way. I mean, with 10, right. 50 more wood, he could have finished it. And now, Bobabu is doing a decent job just sort of exploiting this mobile advantage he has and just sort of running around 
Japan's units. Oh, and we see an age up here for Japan. I, I would thought oh. he would stick it out a little longer, but he's decided to do age up straight away here, and also laying down the stable. I like that. And Bobabu's popped right now. He's getting a couple houses down. Ship 1k wood here. I like that Shimon. I wouldn't be surprised if I watched him drop a town center somewhere maybe down here. Oh, is he going to spot this uh, the shrine? Yes, please siege it. Oh, not today. Oh, no. Oh, there yeah, it is. It's going for it. So if we look at recalculated economic population, which I always forget to put on until later in the game when we're watching Japan. Uh, Japan is up by a bit now, and he's yeah. even up in military. Exactly. And he's also aging up, so I mean... Yeah. This is not really paid off for France. Yeah, I'm not sure either. He's not... I'd like him to do something more with this period where he was age 3 and Japan is not. And maybe like to see a 2 Falk push relatively early and try to take out this consulate. And, you know, France's buildings are also way back in his base and the walking time to get here is relatively long. Five cures out. Oh, that's actually a lot. I mean, France still has a really nice eco here. Let's not be fooled. And France, age three, is strong. Even though goons got nerfed, uh, cures are a good unit. And there's the age up with the golden pavilion, so it's gonna boost his uh, units, attack and speed, whatever he chooses. Yeah, and Bobabu is just, he pulled the cavalry from that shrine, and now I think he wants to see what Japan has now that he's aged. Oh, <laughs> that Yumi volley. Yeah, pretty decent unit control from both players, actually. Yeah. I like this stealth scout here from uh, Bobabu. It can be very helpful in the game. Yeah, not if he drag boxes it with his army though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Ah, oh, that Yumi's just uh, taking off so much. Okay, so here's the two thought push coming here from France. And now, see two flaming arrows coming from Japan, but two flaming arrows loses the Falk uh, war relatively hard. Yeah. I like that Japan is uh, continuing to shrine in the bottom of the map here. I do as well. The shrine pop is now up to 130. He still he still has quite a bit of wood. Maybe he could get that up to 170, 180 here. Okay. And he does have his two flaming arrow out, and they're pretty good against Falks because they have a longer range. I don't know if they if they do quite enough damage here. Or maybe I'm getting my artillery mixed up. Oh, some uh, Yabusame. Oh, is he going to get a cheeky shot? Oh, he is. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, but they need uh, three shots to kill a, a Falk. That's the only oh, but he got disadvantage. It. That was some nice unit control, though, coming out of Yeah, very nice. And now he loses the scout. Wow, I like that. Yeah, Japan definitely won that trade. And this is a pretty close game. I mean, the militaries are pretty er, pretty even. The economies are pretty even. I think it's going to kind of come down to this to this upcoming engagement, I think, that's about to happen. And Japan is making some Yabusame, which are yeah. the equivalent of Dragoons. So I, I don't know how good they are, to be honest. I think they sort of specialize against artillery, maybe. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, they're, they counter cavalry, so... That's true, yeah. Which will be good against the cures. And he does already have his cherry orchard out, or was that one that he never built from age one? No, he yep, must have shipped. No, he shipped, he shipped. Yeah. It was a nice timing on the ship, actually. That was perfect. Yeah. But... Oh, he's popped. He's only at 110 shrine count, actually. That's kind of huge. Mm. Um, where are his explorers? So explorers are in base. You just kind of need to build them in base now. Yeah, now it looks like France has taken the advantage here, and he's even maybe taking the map control. Yeah. 
then we see British is trying to build a shrine here. And I, I think he really honestly just needs to build them in his base now and maybe try to push out. Especially since he picked off that Falc for free. Yeah, both these explorers are walking around the map here. And, yeah, uh, the, the military advantage goes to France, but you have to keep in mind that Japan does have two flaming arrows. To True. France is one Falg, so he could pop off a lot of skirms. And he's he's picking off these shrines too. He sees a shrine with his cures. And if France just keeps his half of the map, really this three-quarter part of the map that he controls free of shrines, uh, Japan is kind of in a sticky situation here. Like we see building a shrine with a, a villager in base, not on any hunts, that's not uh, optimal. Yeah, he, he does have a couple of cows there, but no, they're being taken. Yeah. And one only cure just lurking here. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that though, he's keeping an eye on that mine. And this mine in base is pretty pretty low. So, alright, we see Japan pushing out. Ooh, getting hit by that uh, volley. Oh, maybe the Yabusami can just sneak up here and snipe this. Oh, that cure is going to die for free. Yep, there it goes. Nice, nice spot by British Musketeer there. Hmm. It looks like they're getting ready to battle here. Yeah. Japan is pushing out. He is looking quite scary here. Oh, he's just gonna pick out this bow. Oh. This looked like it could go very well for Japan. Oh, well, I don't know though. Yeah, it's disciplined close. Ashi about to come in yeah. now. I but think and it's he still time. has the two flaming arrows. I think Japan, if he engages here, will win this. And oh, we're just seeing how good you are. Right. They just do such high damage and they yeah. don't have that pesky setup animation that longbows have. Yeah, they're very nice to micro. Yeah. But France does have a lot of cures here. It's looking quite scary. Yeah, if I mean, he could trap them here with the cure pot, maybe a three cure shipment. Although, yeah, he should have a shipment available, right? Oh, okay, that hasn't been loading. Um... Yeah, and uh, British Musketeer carding his Yumi's even more. Ten Jaegers coming, interesting. I think that can do quite well, I think. And it looks like he's just going to go for this. We'll see how well these Yabusame actually get against these spirits. That could be sort of the story of the game. He needs to put those in hand right now, yeah. The Flaming Arrows are staying up, getting a couple of volleys. They're going down now, though. Yeah, the Ashi control is not the greatest here. He's sort of... Oh. Oh, no. And this is... Oh, this is so hard. This is one so hard for France now. That was some real nice unit control. Yeah. Yeah. I think this Jaeger just gave him a really nice boost. So. Yeah, that was a great timing to push. And uh, these spears are going to clean up most of these long Yumi's, but man, Yumi's do so well over wow. the cab. Wow, they do good. What the I did heck? not expect that. <laughs> what the heck? Well, he did have one Yabusame there, but... Yeah. But Jaegers also do well. <laughs> so. Yeah, this, France still has more units. Yeah, this fight went in favor of France, but... Went not as poorly for Japan as it maybe might have. Oh, oh, he's decided not to do a villager push. And Are we getting some like lag? A little bit of lag, yeah. Yeah. Did he send a daimo? <laughs> no, no daimyo. Why no daimyo? I'm not sure. Mm, this lag is actually looking bad now. Yeah. Maybe we might want to pause it, I don't know. 
Okay, Francis is oh, actually starting to run out of hunt now and he's moving out. Yeah. Oh, these Nagis aren't gonna do damage, so Jaegers are such high damage. I think Gears are here to come up. Man, I'm... I think those Yumis are good. He needs more flaming arrows, I think, to deal with this. Yeah. Because he does have this wall to his advantage, and now he looks like he's trying to finish it. Oh, but look at all these villagers on this gold mine about to get. Oh, it's just he'll be able to get in there. But those cures get in there. But the Yumi are doing work here. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm impressed. Those Yumi are doing insane work. You should just back up now and just keep kiting with those Yumi's. Sentry's being called here to help deal with yeah, this curse. Yeah, I like that. Although these villagers are all getting picked off up here, that's not good. That's not awesome. I mean, those, you got such a good good engagement on those cures, if you didn't just lose 9 villagers or so, you'd be just fine. But, oh, he's losing so many villagers. Yeah. He's still ahead in score though, probably due to the shrine pop. 180. Yeah. And he's actually still ahead quite a lot in the calculated economic population. Even though he's lost 18 villagers. Wow. Yeah. That just shows how good Japan is. And Japan's good. And he's still ahead in score. Yumi's. These Yumi's are just doing work. Oh my gosh. They're and just standing there like their boss. It's almost oh. getting to that, to that count where you need like 10 plus cap to really, uh, really take them out. And then I think Bob is actually struggling to get resources as he has to relocate his villagers constantly. Yeah, the nice thing is he does have this entire lower half of the map. But yeah, he does still have the map control to his advantage, but that can soon change here. Yeah, and Bobabus just keep making the skirmishers, which just do not trade well versus Izumi at all. I don't know, maybe maybe he drops an artillery foundry and goes heavy on top and that's I'm not sure. But Japan has about six hundred coin left on this mine before they have to push out into this one and hold that. Mm. Yeah, that's the main problem for Japan are the gold mines, because all the other resources they can just get next to their town center. Yeah. I would like to see Japan maybe throw down a castle here or something. Try to secure some map. Yeah, I agree. Or even here. British Musketeer is just very well macroed right now. He's playing well. And, I mean, uh, Japan does have the Golden Pavilion speed upgrade available he could like send some seven eight ashes around and raid some village. that would actually i like that that'd be smart so there are a large amount of oh that is brutal oh. look at that there's like six six skirms just dropped it. even but more three fouls coming in here for yeah, friends yeah okay so falling, oh man oh, oh wow oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my gosh that was brutal so babu who uh heard my heard my idea here and ooh, those yabu sami don't do well against them yeah, they're pretty lethal. But still, those that volley those three had is insane. And so, yeah, he needs a castle, if anything, for mortars now. Or, uh, wait, do... Does Japan get mortars? Or they just... Uh, no, they have they have the equivalent of mortars. Okay. More, more taro. <laughs> yeah. I think they're called... Some sort of Colburn unit. Um, because Yumi, as good as they are, I don't know if they can push into a mass of falconets. But if you think about it, friends shipped uh, a thousand gold shipment with the Jaeger, and he's also made three Falks here, so he's must be running low on the gold. Yeah, he has one gold mine left after this one. He's mining. Well, he does. He does have this one here, and he yeah. can gather here. It gets it gets really extended though. Ooh, and a nice catch here. Wow, those villagers. Japan's out of gold, it looks like he's wandered quite far when he had this gold mine here. Why yeah. did he do that? It's a little greedy. 
He's also, his cherry orchards are run out, right? So he's no food income right now. He has to build, uh, he has to build rice patties. But the, oh, if, he, if he can focus down these falconets, he can still win this fight. Yeah, all the oh, falconets Yumi, dropping now. So good. And this is looking good for Japan right now. Wow. He just needs to secure a little bit of map here, maybe throw down a castle or something. Yeah. So needs to throw. He he's he has twelve hundred uh, wood right now. He needs to make about three rice patties. Oh, that's true. Look at his wood. Wow. Yeah. Almost fourteen hundred wood. He, 1400 just, he really needed. He really needs to notice that now. And look at his food. That's what's worrying me. Thirty-four food and zero yeah. count. If if he can figure that out, he he can. You know, I think that'll put him in a great position. But as of right now, he's has no he has no reinforcements. Maybe uh, get down another town center as well. Yeah, yeah he that's, he needs to do something with that. That's getting scary. And a thousand coin, almost two thousand wood, and no food. If he oh, but he's gonna spot these villagers. And uh, two more falcons wow. coming out for Bobabu. Yeah, but he's he's gonna lose two here and run yeah. away. I think maybe oh, a third. Look at how vulnerable this is, though. If you can see that. Oh, oh man. Oh, please see it. And get some cav down there to snare him. Yes. Oh, he's gonna push with these two falconets. Oh, they're gonna get another volley. Nope. Oh, nice control there. Yeah, these shrines are really good here, giving him vision of uh, Bob's complete army, so he yeah. knows what's coming to him. God, look at how just if he just pushes down there. But he is dropping down two rice patties, thankfully. Almost needs like two more because so many other resources. The stable never quite going up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's possible that he 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 feels himself in the lead, and uh, it can get really nerve wracking at this time. Still no daimyo to be seen here. Yeah. Do you think he's doing it because he's worrying about the lag? Or <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I don't see any other reason why not to have a daimyo at this point. I agree, point. especially over five, uh, five nagis. But you know, nagis are like a good unit. But he's still he's just very mismacroed right now. If he had, he has like the equivalent of three thousand resources yeah. that he can't really spend. If those were in units, he would crush anything that. Exactly, that. that's the only reason why this game is even right now. Yeah. And now four Falconets, that's insane. <laughs> oh, that villager might get out of there alive. There it goes. Still though, in all, 31 villagers being lost by British Musketeer and 11 CDDs by France. By Bobapu. And France is getting ranged cavalry caracol right now. That's going to help him out a little bit. Oh. But I don't think Dragoons are the unit you really want to be making against Yumi yeah. Yabusame, are they? It's, yeah, it's possible he's just afraid of uh, have a Nagi switch here. But British Musketeer content with making Yumi Yabusame, which I think is alright because those can just DPS down Falk so quickly anyways. Oh, if they can... Oh, oh... No, no, no! Oh, my gosh, that's brutal. Wow, that volley! But the Yabusome account is actually pretty big now. They can one-shot these Falks. Yeah, this is... Oh, my gosh. See, that that's a good. lot of resources. He's dropping. Wow. Still one in HP. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I, I see these. I, I mean, I saw that volley, and I'm like, "There's no way Japan can can do this." And then he just does it, and I'm surprised but every time. It, it's just sad to see. I mean, France keeps streaming in here with two, three fouls at a time, and they just go down. All the, it's a lot of resources he's investing into this, and not really getting much out of it. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if his composition isn't the best. If he needs to sort of, I don't know. 
Like, I wonder what, what would do better <laughs> against this. I really don't know. I think this is a really tough composition to deal with. Yeah. I can see why Bob is struggling to, to make the right units here. He just needs more of everything, pretty much, because he doesn't have enough here. He keeps going in with too little. And he needs to maybe... Well, what what's the Shrine Pop at? 160. Okay, yeah. he's done a decent job. That should be that should honestly be 200 though, like right here. Yeah. Right here. I mean, look at the the wood he's holding. Yeah, I think he's gonna realize it soon. This stable still not being built. Yeah. Um. Hmm. He does have oh. three rice patties down though. Very deleted it. Yeah, I like his rice patties now. Fixing his food a bit. Uh, he needs honestly just more villagers and another ten on a rice patty. Uh, maybe drop a town center, definitely some more shrines. And the friends getting a third town center up. Uh, eventually, if he gets enough villagers out and transitions to mills and plantations, he could he could take this. Yeah, this is a crazy long game. Honestly, yeah. Japan should probably push, right? Um, I mean, what does... Okay, he's down to his last 700 gold here. Uh, what's going to happen after that's over? He's just going to have to chop wood and build plantations. But I mean, it's hard. It's hard for Japan to know this, other than maybe sort of a feel for the game, how long it's gone on. I would like to see Ashi raids, though, like you mentioned before. Yeah. Um, France has 54 CDB right now, so it's quite a decent amount. Yeah, I mean, the recalculated economic population is about even, and if you'll recall, about 10 minutes ago, France was down 10 or 15. So. He's really done a nice job catching up, and even though he's losing these battles, Japan isn't pushing, which allows no, him to... No, Japan is, is playing very defensive here. I mean, yeah. you can really hold forever like this, but can you win? That's, yeah. that's the question. He has I mean, to do damage. He really needs to push now. He's only pushing now because he's getting raided. He, you have to recognize you're at 186 population. If you're not aging, you should be pushing here. That's an insane amount of military. Yeah. And then the gold mine is now finished yeah. here. And he doesn't have the wood for uh, for plantation. So he, he does have one down. He has one plantation down. But, oh. but the army right now for Japan is just way more... He can just shove everything in here and he will win so hard. Oh, I like this cure mix. Need to get the ash in here. Should send the Yabe to the palace. Yep, just like he's doing. Oh, these Yumi are just... Insane, this might just be GG, look at this. Yeah, I think look this is the DPS. Those Valks are next to useless against Yumi, it's insane. Bob realizing it, calling the GG. Game 1 goes to the Japan British Musketeer. Well played by both players. Well played, good game. That was a fun one to watch. It really shows, puts into example how well Japan scales in the late game. With all their upgrades, even... There wasn't even a daimyo in that fight. Yeah, why no daimyo? I'm gonna ask him that now. Yeah, that's okay. I, mean, I really want to know. <laughs> yeah, it's possibly just forgotten. That's something. Well, I he he didn't need it, but yeah, I mean, it could have helped a lot. Maybe he just forgot. Could be. All right, next map is uh, High Plains, and I'm going to step out for just a second. I'll be right back. Okay.
so no Japan Okay, I'm back. Okay, he said he didn't have the map, so I think Bob is gonna host or I was gonna give it to him. Okay, no problem. Yeah, Bob should just host then. Yeah, I think that's the easiest one. He says he doesn't. He doesn't have it? Okay. okay. I'm, ho I'm hosting it, I'll just give it to Yeah, alright. Planes. So now neither player can play, or I mean, Bobabu can't play France, and British Musketeer can't play Japan. Exactly. And who chooses first? The loser? Um, the winner chooses instead first. Okay, the winner chooses first. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. To get countered. Yeah. I'd still like to see ports on high plane. I like that sit there. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, I'm just giving them Pampas as well and we'll be done. No problem. Okay, Bob is hosting. Um, hmm, we might have some weird. Um, <coughs> ESO shenanigans. I can't, can't see, see. I can't see British Musketeer. I, I think it may be him. Are you in a game? Um, he invited me. Okay, yeah. he put a PC in the second slot. Okay. You're in. Let's just have him relog. If not, then we're all gonna have to relog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, somewhat frustrating that ESO has been having these issues lately. Uh, if you guys don't know, a lot of the times, even though both players are online and connected to ESO, it won't show up for the other player that they are online, and so you can't join games, you can't whisper. It makes communicating very difficult, but we'll try to get it sorted out here pretty soon. Yes. We should be good to go in a couple of moments. Yeah. 
Um, I don't, can anybody get in touch with British Musketeer and tell him to reload? Um, yeah, he's in the Twitch chat. Okay. Let's. Uh, I think we should all uh, relog our games. I'm going to. I think that sort of fixes it in the past. Just. Uh, all right. Relogging as much as possible. I'm just afraid it's going to get worse, but I know. <laughs> let's hope not. No. But I think he's been trying to relog because we couldn't see him. Let me know when you're online. <clears throat> uh, do you see me? No. I'm bugged no. now. I can get messages yeah. from British Musketeer, but I can't talk to him. I can tell when I'm bugged when I see like everybody online and not in-game. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to restart my whole game here. Now he has the map, so it shouldn't be any more problems after we get yeah. going. Is he hosting? Okay, I see him online. I see Bob Ogu online. Are you online? Yeah. Yes. Great. Whoops. Can you join the game? Yes. Great. Alright. So we should be good. Yeah. Unless it's uh, total chaos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, where did British Musketeer go? Come back. Reminding them of the rules. See what they opt for here. Aztecs. Interesting. You don't see a whole lot of Aztec play, I feel. They're one of the more interesting civs, in my opinion. Yeah, they're definitely fun to watch and yeah. cast. Oh, okay, please. he's changing to German. I um, I think he's, he plays a lot of German. I think he's very comfortable with this. Um, yeah, and this is a nice TP map, so... Yeah. France this, against German. This is another class of matchup, kind of like Brits versus France. You know, this is like the semi-FF matchup. Yeah. Exactly. And Germany used to have a nice advantage here, but now it might be quite even uh, with the Ulan nerf. Yeah, the Ulan nerf is kind of a big thing. Takes I mean, it w Go ahead. Yeah, it would be uh, a lot better for France if they didn't have minus 100 food now. Yeah. But that makes it even. So? We do have a wood start here, and then the top right of the map here, and the color red, playing France. We have British Musketeer, winner of last game. And in the bottom left, playing Germany in the color blue, is Total Chaos, a.k.a. Bobabu. Interesting. Going for a TP straight away here. Yep. The Get blue in. player. This is uh, that good TP, like I mentioned before. Um... And so now, whatever trading post British Musketeer decides to go for, I don't think he'll get this first pass. 
Oh, it looks like he's trying to get to this top one. Maybe he will. Yeah, I think he's going going for the top one, which is a safer option. As it yeah. is quite farther away if you want but to see. I, I don't think he's going to get it up though before this comes up here, and then that means that his first experience pass will be super late. He'll get his first one after Boba Boo's back too. So I like uh, I like the initial trading post placement a lot better here for the German player. And he's already picked off one of these uh, outlaw riders. Yeah. He's for 320 XP treasure. That's actually insane. If you can get through the game and sneakily pick those off, that's like uh, one and a half shipments there, deep into H2. Yeah. He is playing as German, so he he could use his early Ulan to go for that. If yeah, that's true. There's some nice treasures here. 80 wood. Oh, here's the 140 food. Nice. Yeah. Let's see if anybody spots it. I think uh, Francis already scouted it. Or what's that about? Yeah, friends have scouted it. Yeah, he has. The native scout is still good in terms of scouting, of course. He can quickly yeah. scout the whole map before his opponent. And there are a lot of good treasures on this map, so that's important. Yeah. And the gold mines seem about right. Yeah, I agree. And he's gonna pick up that 140 food. Okay, this native scout can't snare, but his explorer certainly can, and he is doing so. Yeah. Uh, like already that. getting him down to 130 HP here, and he's got his whole HP bar. And it's good that this uh, native scout is running away too, because since the native scout can't snare, if you have the native scout and the explorer attacking, the native scout actually effectively blocks your yeah, explorer exactly. from snaring. Unless you like hard micro it, but yeah. you can't really waste time doing so. Nope, run away. Well, this is actually okay. He's idling. Yeah, he's time. making them garrison. One Although, more shot. Germany Two more is, shots. Two more shots. Germany is aging now, so that's nice that they got that up. But actually, that took off a lot of valuable XP that he might want to spend on some treasures like this. 80 yeah. wood or 95 wood that he scouted, too. And he needs to be careful here until he ages up if he gets snared. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, he still got this. It's dead. Oh, yeah. oh there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, so the the French player is two scouts ahead here in H1. He yeah. still has both scouts up. And see, he wants to go for this 95 uh, wood, but he has to wait till he ages to get his XP back. Just because he lost so much to that town center. Yeah, exactly. Market now going out for France while in transition. Standard play. Yeah. With a TP start, that is. Oh, and that's a nice treasure. 95 wood he's working on here. I think he's going to wait till he ages up to get it. Yeah, definitely. So the German player up uh, quite a bit earlier than the France player, actually. Um, looks like the France player had to age a bit later. I think. Did he do a 15 no? bill age? Oh, oh, never mind. It's 14. Uh, perhaps he just idled a little bit of time with the 200 wood start and the minus 100 food. Yeah, because he does have two CDB in here. Yeah. That makes sense. So, France, so let's see what he goes for. Barracks, straight okay. away. Still no stable up here for for Germany, and he has picked up his 400 wood from the age up already. What is he going for here? Hmm, what are what do the texts look like? Let's have a look at his deck. Is he trying to do some mercenary? No, he doesn't have the improved mercenary card. I think he might just. Oh, I think he's trying to take the TP line. He went up here to try to get this town or this uh, trading post and. Ah, uh, I see. So that's actually quite a huge walking distance there, and that's why he didn't build a stable. That might hurt him a bit. 
And he shipped 700 wood first as well, so he must yeah. have a lot of wood right now. I'm interested to see what the France player makes from this Rax. It uh, doesn't have anything in queue yet. And here come, okay, there we go, five musketeers, and here come the first two Ulans. Ulans just do such high damage to villagers. But it's a nice control here from British musketeer. And going for a third TP. I like this. He he's actually just trying to TP boom. Yeah, I like it too. The uh, the um, the trading post on this on this map is just so strong. Uh, and if you can get sta if he gets uh, four trading posts to one and upgrade stagecoach, that's a huge advantage for him. Yeah, he definitely has to get stagecoach. And he's just gonna he's just gonna semi FF off this. He's Mac going to go to H three and just keep raiding red's base. Meanwhile it looks like red wants to take uh, take out a TP noticing that blue is building more of them. Yeah, that is the smart move. I mean one Ulan is really not so scary anymore. I would even pop him off with the villager. Yeah, I agree. We have a lone Especially villager here, maybe misclicked. Or maybe uh, he's going for a proxy something. Well, I think he just misclicked his town center waypoint. Yeah. He's like, huh? Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Going the wrong way. And taking the fourth TP now, but he probably will lose this TP. I don't see him having any units out to contest this. No. Right now. And, and if France rebuilds this, which he definitely can because he's holding about 750 wood. If he rebuilds this, then suddenly it doesn't make sense for Germany to upgrade Stagecoach. But that being said, just the experience that he's getting from these is going to be He's helpful. already got Stagecoach now. Oh, he does. That's okay. If he ships Skirms here, um, then I think he can take control of this TP line. And the first military building coming down here for Germany is a barracks. French yeah. shipping now 700 coin. I think he's about getting ready to age up. He definitely has the food for it. Yeah, France is aging up. He's popped. Maybe he should build the house here. But so Germany getting to age three a bit sooner than France, and that's going to leverage him a bit of the early economic advantage. And he can't. Oh, it's important to note that Red can't rebuild that TP because his uh, explorer was killed down here. Yeah, so it looks like Bobabu is going to rebuild this and actually that's huge for Germany right now. Yeah, why did the I think France kind of got scared when he saw the age up. Honestly, he stopped uh, pressuring the TPs. He just went back to his base. I agree. Uh, maybe you should have a bit of an internal clock here that uh, you know how long it takes for shipments to arrive for Germany and when you can expect uh, eight skirms or so and I think he could have easily sieged another trading post yeah and even skirms can't really snare he could have like right. hide it and Yulan that came to him and just ran away yeah and, and now now that he's age three now that both players are age three musketeers become a whole lot less valuable right so maybe yeah, exactly. would have liked to see a little more value from them earlier So really kind of fortunate for Boabu that he kept this TP line despite not having the army to really defend it. Yeah, this TP line is really important right now though for the German player because it's giving him complete vision of the middle of the map knowing when the French player is going to push out on him. And also, yeah. of course, these resources keep coming in here. Yeah. And oh, these musts are now... Oh, if he snares with his Ulans, those musts can maybe all be dead. See, he's pushing up now, but after he's given Germany time to make units, ship units, and do a whole lot more. Yeah, Germany looks to be in a really good spot right now. He's going to take the last TP here, probably. Yeah. Okay, now he, yeah, oh, he's going is. for it. I do. Yeah, I group my explore a lot. And he's waiting for the, for the wood to come in, probably, from a pass. Yeah.
Mm. And uh, Franz is in trouble here. I mean, uh, he, he's about to run out of hunt here in his base. Yeah, this bison has really, moments. really wandered away uh, pretty fast. Yeah. And he's also uh, down to his second gold mine in his base before he has to move out. Yeah, he kind of has to make something happen. He has to push out, but he just doesn't have the means. I mean, these musketeers are just... They can get so awkward in H3 uh, when skirms come into play. But two falcs do come out, and if now, if anything is his timing, it's now, so... Needs to make something happen. But he has a lot of wool on here. Uh, yeah. I guess those musketeers will do a nice job defending these fights here. Oh, those war wagons tanking that shot. I really need a, the musketeers in the handbook here on top of the Falcons. One foul going down. Yeah. Looks like the second one going down as well. Jeremy and, uh, seems to just really be blown away here with this fight. And now they have uh, all the TPs. Well, the explorer decided not to build this one. But okay, friends running good. away here with the rest of these skirms. Well, you could still kind of fight. No, he doesn't have enough skirms here. Yeah, not quite. Wobobu making the, the mistake I do a lot, which is he groups his explorer with his skirms, which is great, until he wants to build something with his explorer. Yeah, exactly, I see that half built. And then now he notices, now he goes, see when I notice that I put him in like con like control group 9 or something that I never use. Yeah. And that's GG. That's GG. Yeah, he realized the TP boom was just too much to deal with here. And I like that build order on this map, I think the TP line is very strong and he did a nice job with it. So Bababu is tying the series up one to one in this best of three. Yeah, so we're gonna go to game three. In Pampa Sierra for the decisive match here between these two players. You see hosting? Uh, I don't see him hosting. I do see everyone online still, so that's good. Yeah, it should be fine. Maybe he's looking at the post game? No, I think they're out. So Bababu showing that uh, Germany is still a competitor here. Uh, well, at least on a TP map like this, for yeah. sure. And he didn't really build a whole lot of Ulans. I don't even know if he shipped eight Ulans or not. Yeah, France uh, struggled against Germany before and now it looks like it's the same way, really. Nothing's changed there. Yeah. A lot of people are maybe quick to call uh, Ulan's uh, useless with their HP nerf, but I think it might. I think it was a good change. Yeah. I don't see him hosting the game. Yeah, yet. I'm gonna whisper him. Maybe he wants a break or something. I think British Musketeer needs the last map or so. Oh. I, g I gave it to uh, uh, Baba Bull. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think Baba Bull just stepped out here. Yeah, we'll give him a couple of minutes. Yeah. I'll invite British Musketeer anyways and give him this map.
So British Musketeer is looking like a solid player here. I, I didn't really know much about him before. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed by him. Um, I know I, Bob was actually a good player. I, I think he's really not been playing at all uh, lately, but uh, yeah. Yeah, no British Musketeer. I see him a lot on the forums. Um, and especially the first game, I was impressed by by his uh, by his unit control and, and his overall game plan there. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, like you said, Bobabu is a good player. It's hard to take games off of him. All right, looks like British Musketeers hosting here. Mm, okay. I'm in. And who chooses first, the loser, right? Uh, the winner of the last map. So oh, yeah. I always get confused. Yeah. The no winner. problem. So, Bob. I wouldn't be surprised if he clicks in with Germany. But this is a non TP map, though, which does hurt them a lot. Two non TP maps in this round of 128. It's uh, very interesting. And then the map that does have trading posts has enough of them for all the maps, right? <laughs> There's five of them. Yeah. I think it's it's nice that they made it this way so people don't really abuse this TP strategy over and over and over. I like it too. And we see some kind of different uh, game styles and matchups. I like non-TP maps. Still have not, in these two series we played, we've not seen any Dutch or Port which most people would say are the two best sieves on this set. Yeah. I think it's because uh, these two players don't really are not really familiar with these civilizations. That's true. Because if not, then, I mean, there's really no reason why not to abuse Dutch and Port <laughs> yeah. in this tournament. Maybe India even, and British. Well, British has, we have seen it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I love British. Sometimes I lie awake at night and uh, <laughs> wonder if I had entered the tournament, what would I have done? Oh, but you're not okay. in the tournament? No, I know. Nope. I, at the last minute I pulled out because I don't know. Uh. I, I'm an idiot. But I, it's okay. I enjoy watching. I enjoy casting here. Um, yeah. Watch some better players play. Well, you can join the next one. This is That's prep. right. <laughs> Because this sure ain't going to be the last tournament that you saw. Oh, no. That's for sure. Um, so are they ready? or? Um, looks like Boabu is going to take a quick restroom break. Oh, ah, okay, okay. All right, I'll just grab a drink. No problem. I'll entertain. <laughs> So I just want to thank all you guys, people, all you nice people for watching the stream here today. I have uh, 113 viewers, which is pretty, it's pretty neat, especially for a round of 128. It's nice to see players that we know, you know, active in the forums, duke it out. And a couple of great series here we've had, both going to map three. Um, as always, these ESOC tournaments are only made possible by you guys and your donations and watching the stream so I really appreciate uh, the community we have here and what we can accomplish Oh. <clears throat> 
tell you what, after this is done, I might take myself a nice nap. Because I had 8 o'clock in the morning laboratory on a Friday. So that's not real fun. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you, Callan. No problem. All right. So France against Japan again, but this time, no, it's the same way. I thought it was the other way around, but it's the same way. Yeah, I'm interested. Except the map. Yeah, yeah the map ahead. has changed, but it's still no TP. So I wonder if Boba Boo will change the strategy from last time. I think you could say it wasn't maybe the best choice to go against Japan like that. Yeah, and uh, judging by the first game, the first matchup we saw, this exact same thing happened that uh, Japan was played on both Bengal and Pampasieras. And Bengal turned out to be not so good map against yeah. Russia. But this this map did turn out to be a good map for Japan. So we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, I agree. This is a nice map for Japan. Um. So in the top, we have, in the color blue, British Musketeer playing as Japan. And in the bottom, we have Total Chaos, a.k.a. Bababu, playing as France in the color red. I yep. think it's the color red. Yeah, I didn't have yeah. all friends in full colors. <laughs> uh, repeat, uh, repeat matchup of game one in this series, but now it's game three, uh, deciding match, and who goes home and who keeps playing in, the, in this ESOC Autumn Tournament. So the stakes are high. I'd imagine if I was playing, my hands would probably be shaking here, trying to find all these llamas. But looks like oh, looks like they're doing a pretty good job picking them up. Boba Boo actually has picked up a lot of llamas, and he's even going to get this one here. So it looks like Japan only got mm -hmm. one. Ooh, and it could even be snagged by the scout if he sees it. Yeah, it looks like Boba Boo is definitely prepared for this map at wow. least. Yeah, he that was... knew exactly where to go. <laughs> he got this llama too. That was an impressive. Llama start by uh, Bo Babu. Oh my gosh! Got every yeah, single he, one. He just wrecked the crap out of the llama. Yeah, yeah that, was, <laughs> that was some really nice age one. Uh, we see the the native scout coming into play here, and also uh, perhaps the Japan player could have used his cherry or cha. But in a game like this, it can be hard to do those sort of extra things when you're worrying about just playing you know yeah we see friends already having hunting dogs upgraded so that's nice yeah uh, they're in the early market pretty standard for both players here Japan consulate for Japan in his first try he actually made it all the way down here which is pretty nice already denying some hunt yeah that can be so annoying playing against Japan so, now that France has eight llamas, do you think he should livestock ten? What do, you, what do you think here? What's the case? I think eight is actually the magical number uh, for livestock pen. So, I think, yeah, he could definitely do it off of 700 wood. Why not? I mean, he, he won't be building a TP, so he doesn't have anything else to spend yeah. the wood on. Yeah, he could do it in transition, like you said, because there's no TP. So, why not make this your TP and then magically gain, like, what is it? Yeah. 400 times 8, which is And like also get some XP from the building itself. Yeah. I mean, imagine a 3200 food boost. That's, uh, that's... It's pretty huge. Yeah. Okay, he's hunting, uh, herding. I mean, it's pretty decent, although some villagers getting caught here. Yeah. But he is he aging up, so yeah. that was perfect. Okay. You look at treasures. Japan picks up uh, 90 coin. Uh, and it looks like France got 70 and 30 food. Yeah, 100 food total. So that kind of makes up from their minus 100 food. Great total. Uh, exactly. Oh, I think he might be getting this uh, cow treasure, which would indicate to me he's going to build a livestock pen. Yeah, yeah. and that's there just the goes. one cow. Yeah. There's also a two sheep treasure sometimes on this map, but I don't see it today. Mm -hmm. Wow, there's one villager very heavily guarded. I haven't seen this before. Four uh, <laughs> out and 
outlaw blowgunners. That's kind of yeah. over overkill there. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Must be the princess there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a pretty purple gown. So Japan putting down this early wall, like we saw him do the first game as well. We'll see if yeah. we'll see if France. Although I don't think France is doing any uh, more aggressive play. No forward base villagers. So. Although he does have the one up here. Yeah, he's gonna hurt a little bit more with it. Or is it... No, actually it looks like he's preparing to build something. Yeah. I mean, he's macroing uh, food and coins, so you have to think... There it is. Uh, okay, racks. barracks. I like the rack start yeah, here. Yeah, I do too. I want to see some pikemen. He's and not. I, I wonder if he's going to just like muscus. Yeah, he's know. going muscus. He's mining gold. I'd like to see the stable here, and then the seven hundred coin is usually or the seven hundred wood is usually what comes next. Um, yeah, and, and he could make the livestock pen off of that. Yeah. Yep. There's the seven hundred wood. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to see a stable here, too. Um, or maybe he just... I don't know what he does. Maybe he just goes for just infantry. But eventually, what I'd like to see him do is go for a timing here. I want to see a livestock pen, and when those things are fattened up, uh, go for a military timing. Yeah. Uh, where is the cow at? It looks like uh, Total Chaos picked it up, but I don't see it. Uh, did Japan get it? Did Japan steal it after he picked it up? I know it was quite a ways away from his explorer when he was bringing it back. Where is that cow? Oh no, this is driving me crazy. Maybe <laughs> maybe Japan oh, stole here it, it and deleted found it. it. Oh, whew. It was camouflaged oh. in there with the, with the almost, guanaco. Almost lost you, bud. Nice, so cute. All right, so here we go. Five musketeers on the floor, and he's dropping another barrack. So just gonna do like a musketeer push. Um, and there's a livestock pen. Yep. And Japan again, not choosing to complete this wall. This is an interesting wall in that it doesn't really close off any segments away from Cav. It just sort of creates this looping, walking distance, uh, which is good in itself. And oh, a misclick oh, onto the treasure guardian. Yeah, oh, he's, he's gonna, gonna lose, lose a villager bill. for it. But oh. he did lose it to, to the blowgunner, so he, yeah. the red player didn't get the XP at least. That's true. But he's gonna lose half the Hashi HP on that. And 600 coin coming down here, so 600 wood and 600 coin for the Japan player. There's a the livestock pen now. Uh, I missed when he built it. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure what these guys are doing. If they're going to siege shrines, if they're trying to look for an explorer. Um, the Ashi are going to catch these monsters out, especially with their superior speed. Uh, and Japan is choosing to build a bit more of that wall. Oh, what is going on here? Not sure Two villagers what. dropping. Yeah. Wow, it's gonna get snared the third one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the native scout can't snare. I guess he just tried to sneak some villagers over there to that mine since his mine was so far forward. Oh, that sounded painful. Did you hear how he screamed? <laughs> yeah. And then more muskets streaming in here, so it looks like it's just a pure musket musketeer yeah. push here from the French player. And maybe uh, you'd like to see Japan mix some Yumi here. Japan normally starts Yumi, so I'm kind of surprised to see this Ashy play. And uh, and all, and all, not Yumi, but we do have Bastieros popping out, which will help a lot if you can kite well with these. There it is. I would like to see this cow being uh, tasked on the livestock pen. Also, he has one. Well, never mind. He's eating it, eating it now. But well, he could definitely test that cow on it. 
Yeah, that poor cow looks like is uh, kind of forgotten. Okay, so friends has enough musketeers to deal with this. So. Yeah, but you, you just have to be careful because those bastieros can hide you. And even yeah. if you might be able to take care of the army, it's not very cost efficient. Exactly. Japan is playing a pretty economically focused build here with four villagers. And he is, he is an insane wood count. He needs to be dropping shrines left and right. Yeah, he's only at 90 shrine pop. Yeah, one yeah. of his explorers is dead here, and the other one is walking around about to build another shrine. Yeah. There, there you go. So he starts shrining again. And yeah, if, oh, if there are just some Yumi here, Yumi behind a wall, shout out to Clan Yumi Wall. Um, it's pretty good. There's a reason why people do it. And it's something I'd like to maybe see here. He has five Yumi in Q right now. Man. Okay. There they come. He could build a gate there and make his life a little easier. Yeah, maybe even a little easier. I don't know. Uh, that that passing actually kind of killed him. He was trying to kite and he just kind of kept walking around here. But nonetheless, he is going to hold it off and keep his um, going to keep his console. It looks like that TC fire is helpful as well. France just doing a musketeer crossbow, and it looks to be pretty effective. Oh, there's a daimyo. Nice. He he listened to. Me. Yeah, I asked him uh, in the chat, why didn't he make it? He just said he forgot. Yeah, I, mean, I can see that. Has to be careful though, not to get it stuck here. Oh. And Bob okay, trying to focus it down, but it's not yeah. being successful. And this is kind of getting baited. I think yeah. this wall is hurting Japan more than it's helping them, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, you could make a gate there at least. Yeah. Okay, and the consulate looks like it's going down. So, no more cheaper shrines, and he's at only 100 shrine pop. He needs to get the daimyo back into play here. He's kind of yes. forgotten him again. Yeah. If he focuses down the musketeers correctly, he could bring them in and just slot down the, the crossbows with it. Yeah. And Minutemen pop right now. And see, this is that timing that... There um, it goes. I think France is okay though here, because this is that timing where he's eating all the yaks now off the pen, and he just has this, like, 34, 3200 fast gathering food, and he can just get insane. Yeah, uh, and he's now fattening that cow, finally. <laughs> there he goes. But, I mean, he's still holding a lot of resources here that he can put into units. I do like his Yumi count now though, he's starting to mix them a lot more and it's starting to... Yumi can just wreck what the all infantry composition France has. Yeah, but he's not shrining anymore, he's only at ni well, 100 shrine pump now. Yeah, very true. And some cav on the floor, I think they might be... Oh, they're gonna check this gold mine again. Um, they might also be looking for an explorer to pick off. Bob is doing a nice job here, baiting Japan out of his space and fighting. I agree. So he doesn't want to fight where he is right now. These three huts are going to be nice. Oh, I wonder what uh, Japan has coming. One Ashi and Q here for Japan. And there's the Daimyo coming back into play. Yeah, Kobe. there we go. That's what we needed the whole time. I like, like to see those white circles there. Now, it looks like Japan can hold, but he doesn't really have the economic advantage that he wants. In fact, he's a few behind. And, oh, I like this cheeky musgrave. I like this a lot. Yeah, very nice. Wow. Exactly where he needed to be there. And he's pushing with the other army, so now just back those mucks up like he's doing. This is very nice. I like this. And bring him in. Bubble likes his musketeers, I know that. Yeah, they're a good unit in H2, and that's a good oh. game. There's a GG called. So and the series goes to Bubble 2 1. Yeah, um, very exciting series. 
Br I thought British Musketeer played very well. He impressed me. Uh, I thought he played really well that first game. He took a game off Bobabu, who's a very good player. Um, but all in all, Bobabu is claiming this best of three to move on to the round of whatever is next. What is next? 64? Round of 64. So. Yeah, congrats to Bobabu for advancing and well played to both players here. Definitely. Congratulations. <laughs> But I think that that is all we had on the schedule here for our tournament matches on ESOC TV. Yeah, that's it for for us for the day then. Yeah, thanks for thanks. watching, guys. Thanks for watching, yeah. That was fun. As always, definitely. And um, we hope to see you back again. As always, visit uh, eso-community.net to follow and keep up with the tournament. See recorded games, check out strategies, you know, just talk Age of Empires, talk non-Age of Empires. Have a good time. But, yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, and have a good one.